Is the new M3 MacBook Pro worth it over the M2 Max and even the M1 Max MacBook Pro? Well, in this video, I'm gonna run a bunch of real world tests and comparisons, including SSD speed, CPU benchmarks, GPU benchmarks, video editing, photo editing, Xcode programming, Logic Pro music production, and so much more. And with that, we're also gonna be testing the thermal throttling, the fan noise, and of course, the battery life, because both of these are are charged up to 100% and I'm going to unplug them for this testing. Now, first of all, I wanna mention that this new space black color is absolutely beautiful and it almost got me to upgrade it to the new M3 Max, but we're gonna see if the testing in this video compared to my old M1 Max, which I redid all the testing on, will get me to upgrade. But you know what? Let's start off with a teardown comparison to see if the thermal block actually got bigger in this new M3 Max model. And moment of truth, oh, whoa, look at that, that's something new. Check this out, the new M3 Max has these little, oh, it's actually rubber, these rubber pads, and it seems like that's probably so that if you kind of put pressure on the back of the MacBook case, so it doesn't actually make contact, so it's stopping the contact, which is very interesting, but other than that, the size of the thermal block is exactly the same compared to the M2 Max, which is interesting because Apple made the one on the M3 Pro chip much larger, but not on this one. Which is weird because this is the one that actually got a lot better in terms of having 12 performance cores, 50% more than on the M2 Max. Now, other than that, everything basically looks the same. We still have eight NAND slots for the storage chips with four of them being filled. If you get bigger configurations, then you'll have more of them filled, um, but the same as the M2 Max. The first thing we're gonna start off with is the SSD speed with Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. All right, look at that. It looks like the write speed so far is actually faster, 6271 compared to 5600 on the old one. So it looks like they are using slightly faster SSDs. The read speed is just about the same, 5047 to 5120. So this is really good so far. And getting straight into performance with Geekbench, I do wanna mention that this M3 Max has the fully upgraded chip, which has the 40 core GPU and the 16 core CPU, which means that you're forced into getting 48 gigabytes of RAM. That's why we have that compared to 32 gigs on the M2 Max, which came standard with the fully unbent version. So let's go ahead and start the CPU test. And I do wanna mention this goes up to 4.05 gigahertz compared to 3.67, but let's see if it actually hits that in here. Oh, look at that, 4.05. It's actually hitting it on the P-Core usage. Interestingly, both the M3 and the M3 Pro never hit 4.05. Even though it said it technically can, I think the highest was 3.78 on the M3 Pro chip, but this M3 Max is finally hitting it. And interestingly, the M2 Max is only going up to 3.41 gigahertz. That's a huge difference. And it looks like for single core, the new M3 Max is 17.5% faster than the M2 Max, which is actually really, really impressive. And the crazy thing is I was watching this chart and this thing spiked up to 40 nine watts of usage, whereas the M2 Max max out at about 35, so a lot more power usage for just one of those tests. And holy smokes, the M3 Max is 49% faster than the M2 Max. That is absolutely mind blowing. This is basically running up to the M2 Ultra in terms of multi-core performance. And even more interesting, the difference between the M2 Max and the M1 Max was tiny, but now it's a massive difference. And now let's do the metal graphics test. We have barely any difference in terms of the cores, 38 cores on the M2 Max up to 40 now. So let's see what difference we get. Now with either of them, and especially the 14 inch MacBook Pro, the best way to boost your multitasking workflow is with the Geminos dual stacked monitor from our sponsor mobile pixels, which is a game changer for multitasking workflow, allowing me to drag and drop files and clips from the top display right into my video editing app on the bottom, all while taking screenshots from my video on my MacBook, saving me time and money, and it's all stacked onto this compact base, which saves desk space and comes with a bunch of extra ports. So check out the Geminos dual stack monitor using the link below. And for graphics, it looks like we're only getting a 9.7% raw performance increase, which isn't that good, even though the 
GPU wattage actually went up to 50 watts, which is crazy compared to 38 on the M2 Max but we do have a bunch of new GPU features, including ray tracing, which we're gonna be testing in just a minute. And now let's do a real world gaming benchmark, which is gonna be showing off those new GPU features and seeing what kind of differences for gaming workloads we're gonna get. There you go, that is what I'm talking about. 188 FPS on the M3 Max compared to 150.1. That's 25% faster. That's a big difference compared to that small Geekbench difference we got, and this is actually 57% faster than my M1 Max 32 core that I do actually use for gaming sometimes playing War Thunder. Maybe I should upgrade. And now let's get into web design using Figma. This is a project provided to us by 500 Designs, one of the best design studios over in Cali. All right, the first test is to zoom in and see how fast some of this content loads up. That was basically instant, I didn't even see it not be sharp. Let's test it over here. I'm expecting insanely fast results as well. Both of them are crazy fast for this. But getting into the main test, we're actually gonna export 12 of these layers at four times resolution and see which one finishes first. And we have our scores and it looks like the M2 Max took 10 seconds longer, so not a very big difference, a minute and 28 on the M3 Max, and they both beat out the M1 Max by quite a bit. And now let's get into programming performance with our Xcode benchmark. And by the way, it has been completely redone, so all of the old scores are no longer compatible, everything is new, and the test is a little bit harder, so let's see what we get. And wow, programmers, this M3 Max is absolutely killing it. Only 79 seconds in this test. The M2 Max took 39% longer, and then the M1 Max took 64% longer. So programmers are getting a really good deal with this M3 Max because it's blazing through this. And now let's get into Logic Pro Music production performance. Now this is gonna be exciting. Let's see how much these can handle. We're gonna do 240 tracks on each, which is gonna be tough. Oh, right away, the system overloaded on the M2 Max, which basically means the CPU couldn't handle that many tracks at once. All right, guys, can you hear the fan? That's the first time we've heard the fan so far, and we just played 328 tracks. I don't think we've ever hit that before, and Not it's mind-blowing because this stopped at 190. Four. That's all it can run. That's 69% more tracks that it can run. But get this, my M1 Max only ran 118 tracks. And you're not gonna believe this, guys. The M2 Ultra only handled 320 tracks compared to 328. This thing is beating the M2 Ultra and you can get 128 gigs of unified memory. This is the ultimate workstation in a laptop. And now let's move on to Cinebench 2024 doing some CPU multi-core benchmarking. And by the way, we came back the next day, I closed the laptops, they both lost around 10%, so everything is still equal. Let's get into this. All right, we got MX Power Gadget. Look at that, 50 watts on the M3 Max right away. Only hit about 33 on the M2 Max. In terms of the progress, this thing is absolutely flying and I can actually hear the fans. Wow, the fans are ramping up so much faster than they did last year, especially compared to this, it's barely, barely idling. Wow, guys, the fans are going, they're like literally maxing out. The fans are basically maxing out right now. That is absolutely insane. The temps are nice and cool. 96 degrees Celsius relatively compared to about 103 on the M2 Max machine, the fans are still almost barely, barely running. And the surprising thing is that even though this thing has 12 performance cores compared to eight on the M2 Max, they're all running at 3.58 gigahertz compared to 3.26. So you got 50% more and they're going faster. Surprisingly, the E cores are only going to about 2.47 compared to 2.42. Not much of a difference, but this is just crazy. It's been about five minutes, so I'm gonna bust out the thermal cam and see how both of these are performing in terms of temps. And wow, only 35 degrees as a hotspot where the chip is located. And look at the amount of heat 
right here, 38 degrees right there on the display because that's where the fans are blowing out. 39 degrees on that spot with the dual fans. Let's check this thing out. 40 degrees Celsius hotspot, so it is a little bit hotter on the chip itself. And also 41 degrees on the display. So it looks like the M3 is doing a killer job at keeping the chip cool. There you go, we have our scores, and wow, 1572 on the M3 Max compared to 912 on the M2 Max. That's 72% faster than the one that came out nine months ago. This is mind-blowingly good. And now let's actually do the GPU test, which potentially is using ray tracing, but we're gonna see in just a second. And I do wanna mention, that this crazy performance that we just got in CPU is in a laptop that's unplugged. It's not plugged into power compared to a massive Mac Pro. This just blows my mind. Holy smokes, guys, 12,343 compared to 5901. That's 2.1 times faster year over year. This must be using ray tracing because that's the only way to make sense of this insanely good score. And speaking of ray tracing, let's get into Blender 3D rendering because we have Blender 4.0 beta, which supports ray tracing, so we have this party tug project right here. Let's go ahead and render. All right guys, this is blowing my mind because the M3 Max is already done. I'll show you the score in just a minute, but I noticed they were using about the same amount of wattage for the GPU, around 32, 33, but this thing's still going. Does that mean that ray tracing is just not using that much more power? And guys, you're not gonna believe this score. 27 and a half seconds on the M3 Max compared to a minute on the M2 Max, over twice as fast. And the M1 Max, which I have, took over a minute and 40 seconds. So this thing's three times faster, over three times faster than that one. So basically, if you're doing 3D rendering, now that we have ray tracing, this is a must upgrade for anybody doing 3D work. And here we have Lightroom Classic doing our photo editing export test. We have 50, 42 megapixel raw images. So let's go ahead and get these exported. Guys, this M3 Max is absolutely flying. It is mind blowing. I've never seen it happen this fast. Holy smokes, it finished. Wow, that is a crazy good score. The M2 Max is just about to finish. 30 seconds flat for the M3 Max compared to 46. It's basically 50% faster. I have never seen any machine do this test that fast and it is blowing my mind. I'm sorry everybody who bought the M2 Max. We did warn you and tell you it was basically a stopgap for the M3 family because my M1 Max did it in 48 seconds. So you basically got two seconds faster on this thing but 30 seconds on the M3 Max. Photo editors, you're gonna want this upgrade. And now let's move on to video editing in Final Cut Pro. And this first test is a five minute project with 4K HEVC footage. It's basically the most common format that people shoot with and edit today. And it looks like they both finished in a minute and 14 seconds. There's absolutely no difference. Even though we saw massive differences in other tests, that's because they have the same encoders and that is what the system is limited by because they're just insanely fast. And now let's go all out and do the hardest test that we have. This is four streams of 4K ProRes RAW, which basically simulates 8K ProRes RAW. And as you can see, there you go. You have four clips running at the same time. So let's go ahead and get this exported. It looks like they're both running around the same, but the M3 Max is winning because it does have more GPU power, a little bit more because it looks like ray tracing is not being used at all. So the little gain that it has in raw performance is showing some improvements here. This just finished and we have about two minutes, 20 seconds for the M3 Max and two minutes and 36 for the M2 Max. And this actually looks like around the same difference that we got in our raw GPU performance in Geekbench because it's not taking advantage of all those other gaming GPU features or anything. This is just raw GPU compute. So in this case, for video editors, it doesn't really look like it makes sense to upgrade. But the good news is that the M1 Max that I have took three minutes and 35 seconds. So that's actually a pretty big improvement for this machine and actually might be a worthy upgrade if you're doing crazy video editing like this. And now with all that testing completed, let's get into the conclusion 
conclusion, but first I wanna show off these battery life numbers. Looking at the M3 Max, we have 14% battery, and I do wanna emphasize that we've been running it at 600 nits compared to 500 because it has a capability, and we did actually do more testing on this machine, like for example in Logic, where it was surprising us by how much tracks it was running, so we kept adding more, so it drained quite a bit of battery life there. So now let's look at the M2 Max, 5% battery life. Guys, this is insane. Even with all of that extra power, even with all the extra testing that we did and the extra brightness, we're still getting better battery life on the M3 Max. This is blowing my mind. The conclusion of this is, wow, I am so surprised. This is by far the best M3 family upgrade we've had so far. Massive, massive difference compared to M2 Max. This is the one that we were waiting for and Apple did such a great job. Even if you have the M1 Max, I would say it might even be worth it if you are looking for a little bit more performance than what you currently have. And especially if you have an Intel laptop or something like that, this is such an awesome, awesome upgrade. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know all your thoughts on these tests down in the comment section below. Definitely subscribe for more because we do have more comparisons coming. Check out that video right there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.